disruptors, curious minds, CEOs, professionals, founders, heretics, revolutionaries, the maligned, the bullied. This is for you. I'm Mark. This is Jeremy. This is Thinking on Paper Book Club. And we're here to try to make sense of things that don't make sense. Um, The Order of Time by Carlo Rovelli, part three, the end of the present. Ten years before understanding that time is slowed down by mass, Einstein had realised that it was slowed down by speed. The consequence of this discovery for our basic intuitive perception of time is the most devastating of all. Jeremy, the end of the present. Let's go. First take. Wow, man. So this, yeah, again, this continues to be such a such a fun read. I actually read this chapter twice because I had to. Only okay. twice. <laughs> I literally, I literally had to. Um, not because the writing's bad, but just because the concepts are so like yeah. mind jarring that it takes a few minutes. But here's here's one thing that stood out to me um with this one. Well, first of all, I'm gonna start, let me start with something light. Okay, I always throw like song quotes into some of these things. Um, so James Taylor, one of my favorite songwriters, singers, right? One of the lyrics to his song is the secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Right. right. So I'm going to, I'm going to start you guys there, but now the passage of time is, uh, is a little different for me than it is to Mark. We'll talk about how all that stuff is measured, but let's start with a little joyful expression there. And then here's where it gets crazy. The whole idea of the universe existing in a particular configuration that changes together with the passage of time. Newsflash is false. Yeah, that's the main part of this, is that there is no unification of time and time passes. As we learned in the last chapter, mass changes the speed of time. Speed changes the the passing of time. I learned something interesting, actually, which um, I was listening to a podcast with Brian Green. He was on... Um, Love Brian Green. He was on Star Talk with um, DeGrasse Tyson, and he was saying that in the seventies they did an experiment on a Pan Am jet, and they were to see which is more powerful in disrupting the flow of time, speed or mass. Mm. And they they came to the conclusion that mass outweighs speed. And I thought, hold on, why did you need to fly jets into the sky? Because doesn't a black hole prove that that mass overrides? speed because light can't escape from a black hole vis-a-vis mass must be more powerful than speed um also here's a question for you if speed slows down the passage of time light doesn't age light 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 particles live or in an eternal present holy yeah because that's an energy thing right well, they, neither they, neither created nor destroyed, right? They don't, they don't age. I don't know. Anyway, sorry. Um, Einstein and Maxwell. So I'll let you <laughs> tell us about Einstein and Maxwell. Well, so, so you know, Max, it, it's interesting. It's it, So if you travel at a certain velocity, Maxwell's equations don't apply, yeah. which then you start thinking, okay, we talked about last week, the idea that... Um, the, the idea that our brains, our perception can only um, understand and perceive a certain level of activity, right? You know, nothing smaller, nothing faster, right, than, than we can perceive. But there are things at work. And if we could perceive them, we could we could see the past directly. We could see the future directly and all of these other really interesting things. But so from a Maxwell perspective, you know, electricity magnetism light are kind of all the same thing just manifested in in different ways right um is, and- this, is einstein is this kind of the special theory of relativity where einstein works out that maxwell's equations on time being stationed being one time this and maxwell uh, einstein worked out that in fact his equations the time needs to be specific to the thing that's being measured moving whatever it is um yeah, because because going back, it goes back to the idea of proper time, right? So proper yeah. time has to have a particular location, a particular proximity to mass, and a particular speed, right? So your time, as they as they say, it's like t with a dash, right? That's yeah. your time. My t with a dash is is here proximity to mass, you know, uh, speed, and a particular measuring device. Yeah, to to quote Carlo Ravello, and I think this. 
this sets us up nicely for Proxima B. Um, <laughs> not only is there no single time for different places, there is not even a single time for any particular place. A duration can be associated only with the movement of something with a given trajectory. Proper time depends not only on where you are and your degree of proximity to masses, it depends also on the speed at which you move. It's a strange enough fact in itself, but its consequences are extraordinary. Hold on tight, because we were about to take off. I love that line because I knew that. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. That was awesome. And um, the it, also the other the other thing that the, the thing that we said uh, I think in the beginning, and I actually notated it at the end as well. That um, let me see where is it? Uh, the whole idea of the universe being existing in a particular configuration that changes together with the passage of time is is false. He calls that one of the most important revelations in modern physics ever, right? Yes. So that was another point that he wrote. I was, and he actually said, hey, reader, pause. And I actually paused and looped back and forth into that a little bit to, to, to really consider it. But where it, where it has me- was that, Sorry, was that the point when he says about, so you have this concept of now the present and maybe the present is 15 minutes on earth, half an hour in- the inner solar system. Then when you go out into deep space, we're talking about the present being millions of years. <laughs> well, yeah. So here's how I came out. Here's, here's what hit me. And I, I wrote this down multiple times. The present has proximity limits or proximity yeah. limitations, right? So we have what we call local delay or what I kind of call, I don't know if he wrote this or I wrote this, um, but local delay is kind of light reflecting off. And uh, when you see something like when you're outside and you see a bird, it's not a bird, it's light reflecting off a bird coming back into your brain and your brain generates the image. So I read a book a long time ago by Daniel Eagleman. He's a, uh, a neuroscientist and it was something about time. I can't remember the, the actual name of the book, but he talks about that there's an 80 millisecond delay in between seeing that reflected light and your brain configuring the present and then you realizing what it is 80 milliseconds so even local proximity has uh has a delay in 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 what's happening which is mind blowing right yeah and that's actually that's that's pretty helpful for trying to understand what with his example of your sister being on proxima b which um a recently discovered planet that orbits a star approximately four light years distance from us. So he does this thought experiment where to debunk the idea of a, a now and a present existing everywhere in the universe, he wants you to imagine your sister is on Proxima B and you try to ascertain what she is doing while you so for example she's there now we're doing sitting here doing this podcast well let's, let's let, let me let me stop you real quick i want to step in there's a little step in between this local delay that i talked about yeah with the 80 milliseconds seeing the bird then i have then there's what's called like i don't know if he listed it or again if i wrote this but uh geographic delay so right. that is like you know when things get glitchy on our stream you're in you're in the alps french alps i'm in atlanta georgia right so there's there's the geographic delay that usually relates to milliseconds and anything beyond like 50 milliseconds on a phone call on a live stream starts to appear a little offset and glitchy. Now we have like kind of this idea of space time delay. So go ahead, yeah. continue with yeah. that. Okay. So yeah, so that's a thought experiment. Imagine that your sister or your friend, whoever is on Proxima B, we're here. And then, so this is for me, the immediate example he gives it makes sense. Okay, yeah, if you look through a telescope and you can see her on Proxima B, then obviously, yeah, I understand that light travels this thing, that light's taken this many years to get here, so I'm looking into the past. Okay, that I understood. But then, what my brain starts to melt when I'm trying to, okay, but can't I just imagine what she's doing now? on proxima b and apparently it's not, I, it's not her now when you imagine it it's your yeah, now what's she doing yeah. in your now but her now doesn't exist and, and 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 then this was like is this like the tree falling in the forest and there's no one around to see it does it make a noise and like <laughs> I, I, I can you explain it could you get your head around why so the why of it is is probably the the challenge, but I do understand it. Like the way I think about it is like, what's Mark doing in the French Alps right now? Like, well, you're on this call with me, right? So there's a little bit of 
we have proximity effects because we're connected via technology that has you know that 50 millisecond ish delay which puts us in in that world so our nows are a little bit more connected but but my now is still different and if i say hey what's mark doing now like you would have to be in my now like right here in my now you're kind of in my now i think right now but you it would be like what's mark doing right here is how he explained it in the couple of couple of previous in the one and two chapters i think it's gnarly it's gnarly like <laughs> okay, how about this and it might be like this might be stoner talk but imagine my my friend or you are on proxima b and you say mark at four o'clock i'm going to have a cup of tea and it's like okay i'll imagine at four o'clock in my it's four o'clock and i can imagine but i can't like the, the very concept of me imagining you sitting and having a cup of tea at four o'clock isn't possible because me actually that, having that cup of tea would be four years later like in your reality yeah regardless of like whatever yeah it, it it's it's pretty mind-boggling and yeah, I read it four times and I still couldn't. I could kind of understand what he was saying, but trying to figure out why that is is the hard part of this, I I suppose. And I think even the great Carlo Rovelli doesn't make it very simple with his genealog with his family trees examples. So I kind of understood this. Let I understood. Let's 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 go through let's this. Let's unpack bit. it. All right, so yeah, look, hold that, hold the um, hourglass looking things up. And it's curious that these things look like hourglasses, right? No, go to the next page uh, where he has, yeah, see that. So those little hourglass looking things, I, it clicked to me. I'm like, okay, those are like the atoms of time. They're like these little mini hourglasses. So I start picturing okay, like yeah, time is this giant field of these little bitty hourglasses. But let's talk about like what that hourglass means. So in like a family tree, right? You know, you have uh, you have a mom here, you have a dad here and you have like a kid. Right. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. And it's like, here is here is the here's the way that kind of works. Right? right. And then you have another mom and another dad making another kid over here. Right. So here's the difference between partially ordered and completely ordered. Right. Partial ordering is those two triangles don't ever affect each other like those those three things that happen in those triangles aren't connected to the other three things in the other triangle right that that would be completely ordered if all of those were all together interconnected so that that got me thinking okay so i can kind of get my head around the idea of the present only being the present for those three things the mom dad kid because they're all connected right um so okay, that's... so if those, so anywhere you go in, so we're talking about space time here. So wherever you go out in the universe, because time, the passage of time is being affected by mass and speed, that there is, like, like there is no connection between those times. All the times are different. So you actually actually have this like infinite number of times unfolding throughout the depths of the universe, and so this picture here of the the atoms the 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 timers all connecting to each other so I, I guess you know here is this time this part of space that it's a bit further in the future a bit further in the past a lot further in the future a lot further in the past and that disconnection of now creates this cycle of now <laughs> something like that i think i think that that seems that seems kind of right to me like i always try to think i always I, you're I not vision. you're not a quantum a quantum mechanic we don't even know the words for the jobs yeah yeah we're yeah mind you don't we're not scientists or um physicists or anything like that but yeah disclaimer I, I i've never been to a hydron hadron collider um i would like to go one day yeah. we should go visit one we should yeah there's one there's one in not far from here in switzerland set yeah. it up i'll be there oh, no. set it up no but like it's really i want to go back to this idea of like these little hourglass shapes as because you want something to understand something you want it to be tangible you want to be able to like grab it and touch it and i don't know this that really landed on me that you know this that time could actually be these little atoms yeah uh, and these atoms are made up of these uh partially ordered relationships yeah uh, just, just so you can be clear when you say time is made up of atoms you're not really imagining atoms like little parcels of time and they're all 
yeah. not Adams. It's but Adam is like the example, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of the of the of the bucket of the yeah. of the thing. Um, could you, okay, since since you're on to that one, could you explain this bit if I can just find it? When when he talks about l l light escaping a black hole, it should move to if light moves towards the present rather than the future. <laughs> Did you, did you get that bit? Uh, I, I, I read it. <laughs> I read it. And uh, yeah, the, the black hole thing is... Let me just read the quote for you. This is because the mass of the black hole slows time to such a degree that at its border, the event horizon, time stands still. If you look closely, you will see that the surface of the black hole is parallel to the edges of the cones. So in order to exit from a black hole, you would need to move towards the present rather than towards the future that seems like a very wellness mindfulness thing we got to move <laughs> towards the present anyway right yeah um no well here's 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 so black hole as as carlo Ravelli has it listed an inclination of light cones towards the interior marking a horizon closing off a region closing off a region of the future from everything else around it so like black holes take certain groups of these light cones and be like, and they're basically like, yeah, you guys are, you guys are shut off. You can't go anywhere else in the future. The only way back is to go in the past. It's like, Hey, you guys can't go through this door. You have to go through that door. Sorry. Sorry. It's closed physics, right? Time travel. <laughs> when just been before I was coming here, I was having an idea about mass slowing down time and a black hole, the event horizon time slows, doesn't move. So, I was thinking this, this is going to sound like stoner talk, but I was thinking about the mass of stars already. Just FYI, the, the mass of stars, and they're so big that they slow time so much that, in fact, when you're on the star, time is barely moving for the star. So when they talk about stars being nine billion years old. That's our nine billion years. For them, it might just be, in fact, just one big nuclear explosion, which happens in an instant. But because they're so massive, that time has slowed so much that it stretches out to thirteen billion years. Well, that's like it, the the front of the chapter talks about if you're when when you're moving, like you yourself are moving, uh, there's less time, and when you're sitting still, there's more time. Don't tell the people that don't want to exercise that because you won't get more time by sitting on your butt. Yeah. Um, but if ever but, there was another reason to do exercise, yeah, you're I know, on. right? I know. Yeah, this. Yeah, so where where do we want to land on as far as like, all right, what if we? So going what back to learned? the going back to the first thing, there is no coordinated present right across the yeah. universe. There is no idea of of a conductor standing in the middle of the universe, getting ready to throw a downbeat that everyone will will sync with. You know that that once he goes like this, it's going to be a cacophony of like multiple people trying to clap at different times, right? Yeah. And so there's no universal time. The speed changes, how time passes, mass changes, how time passes. Would you say those are the three things to consider um, as we go into part chapter four, the loss of independence? I think maybe those are the things to consider going forward. I think the last piece that, that just, oh, this is just something that really resonated with me. I've talked about it before. It's just that, that, that time being denoted in these little light cones. Yeah. And these light cones are actually like physical objects in a, in a weird kind of way to help me understand, um, you know, what units of time might even be. Okay. I like it. Cool. Let's leave right. it that then. Awesome. It's great. I love it. My brain is officially melted guys. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good time uh, unpacking this stuff with us. If I was reading this by myself, I would, I don't know. I, I don't know what would happen. So Mark, I'm grateful for your witty banter and getting me thinking in the right way. Yeah. Thinking on paper dot X, Y, Z like subscribe share with your friends and we'll see you next week for more book club um yeah stay destructive stay curious keep thinking on paper bye